The top stories tonight in Y News. New COVID-19 variants detected in New York City and California. The Philippines has logged its most coronavirus cases in a single day. The National Bureau of Investigation assures an impartial investigation on the shootout between members of the PNP and PIDEA, which left four dead. President Rodrigo Duterte will listen to the public sentiment on the Visiting Forces Agreement issue. Filipino Americans in the United States are urged to exercise utmost caution amid Asian attacks. And Twitter to launch feature allowing users to earn from tweets. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, February 26, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Thiel. First in the news. As the U.S. races to vaccinate as many Americans as possible against COVID-19, both New York and California are reporting new virus variants that might be more contagious than the original strain. Miguel Rey de Leon will tell us why. Researchers are worried about the new variant of COVID-19 that has been reported in New York City area in the United States late November. The new variant that carries a mutation that may weaken the effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines has been identified as the B.1.526 variant. Researchers said the B.1.526 variant has appeared in diverse neighborhoods in New York City and is scattered in the Northeast. The findings were released from two research groups at Columbia University and California Institute of Technology or Caltech. Meanwhile, in California, variant B.1.427 slash B.1.429 now make up more than 50% of cases in 44 counties. Researchers believe that strain is more transmissible because of a mutation that enables the virus to more easily bind to human receptor cells. None of the studies on emerging variants are peer-reviewed, so the authors caution that more investigation is needed and more genetic sequencing must be done throughout the country to identify any novel variants. Right now, the CDC provides public data for three variants, B.1.1.7, B.1.351, and P.1, which was first identified in Brazil. The federal government has ramped up genetic sequencing to identify and study virus variants and figure out which ones might pose a problem. Miguel Rey de Leon, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The country has logged 2,651 new cases of coronavirus disease, the highest single-day rise for this year. The newly detected cases pushed the country's overall tally of confirmed cases at 571,327 with 34,498 active cases. Most of the active cases are 88.4% are experiencing mild symptoms, 6.4% are asymptomatic, 2.3% are in critical condition, 2.1% are in severe condition, and 0.74% are in moderate condition. Recoveries also climbed to 524,582 as the DOH confirmed that 561 more patients have beaten the disease. However, 46 more patients died, causing the death toll to jump to 12,247. The DOH reminded the public to continue observing the health protocols to protect themselves against COVID-19. Meanwhile, the country's Department of Health 
continues to campaign for the vaccination against COVID-19 among Filipinos. But a UP Okta research survey has found that only a low number of Filipinos say they are willing to get vaccinated against COVID-19. And this low vaccine trust would impact not just tourism, but also the economy of the Philippines. Aiko Miguel tells us why live. Uh, yes, Aiko, good evening. Yes, William, good evening. One possible reason why only a few Filipinos want to get vaccinated against coronavirus infection or the so-called low vaccine trust is the issue of the safety of COVID-19 vaccines. That is, if the basis is a survey conducted by University of the Philippines after research. That survey, William, involved 1,200 respondents and only 19% of them say they are willing to receive the vaccine. William, according to UP Octor Research Fellow Dr. Guido David, this low vaccine trust would impact the confidence of foreign investors and even foreign nationals coming to the Philippines for business. Here's what Dr. Guido David said. Other nations won't have confidence in us if we are not vaccinated because they are getting vaccinated. And if we are not vaccinated, why would tourists come here? So how can we strengthen our tourism? William Dr. David also pointed out it would be difficult to achieve herd immunity if we don't trust the vaccine and we cannot restore our economy if we don't get ourselves vaccinated. The UP Octa research, research Survey has also found that most Filipinos are willing to get inoculated if government officials would receive the vaccine first. From the recent messaging, um, it was mentioned that yung darating na vaccine, it will not be used for the frontliners and not used for the seniors, but it will be used for the public. And it's not good enough for the frontliners. Bakit? Why would it be used for me? And there would be a confusion. And we want to clarify. I mean, it, yung messaging has to be clear. Also, part of the government's vaccination campaign is encouraging those with non-communicable disease to also get vaccinated. Non-communicable diseases include heart illnesses, hypertension, diabetes, and cancer, among others. According to the DOH, before those with non-communicable diseases get vaccinated, there will be an assessment on their health condition. kung hypertensive yung pasyente and uh, pag BP sa kanya control naman yung blood pressure niya dahil nainom naman siya for example ng maintenance niya so kumbaga he or she need, need not worry kung bibigyan siya ng vaccine so there are guidelines for that and uh, I'm sure madidisseminate naman po yan prior to the vaccination William, the Department of Health continuously encouraged the public to get vaccinated against COVID-19 for uh, experts have evaluated its safety and efficacy. And that is the latest live. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Aiko Miguel, reporting live. Senators say that the mandatory vaccination among the members of the military is constitutional. Joe Anano is on the line to tell us why live. Uh, yes, uh, Joanne, good evening. Go ahead. Yes, Will, the Armed Forces of the Philippines is set for its COVID-19 vaccination rollout once vaccine supplies have arrived in the country. Senator Franklin Rilon defended the mandatory COVID-19 vaccination of the AFP, explaining that this is constitutional as this is part of their police power. The lawmaker cited that it can be justified as a valid and reasonable exercise of police power to promote health, safety, and general welfare of the people. The General Welfare Clause also provides sufficient authority to the state to implement measures for the maintenance of peace and order, the protection of life, liberty, and property. It was also stated that the state may also interfere with personal liberty to promote the general welfare as long as the interference is reasonable and not arbitrary. Senator Coco Pimentel also has the same argument, emphasizing that the commander-in-chief or the chief of staff has the power to, to order for the mandatory vaccination for the safety of the AFP and for the readiness to defend our country in good health. 
AFP spokesperson Major General Edgar Arevalo cited that they are targeting to inoculate 100 soldiers per day. The military officials said that they have designated 72 vaccination teams that will be deployed among different vaccination sites inside military camps with treatment facilities. And that is the latest flag. Back to you, Bill. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Joanna no Live. The Commission on Elections sees no election offense against banners and other paraphernalia urging presidential daughter Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte to run in the 2022 national election. Meanwhile, the poll body has received close to 2 million applications since the, since the resumption of the voter registration. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. Commission on Elections spokesperson Director James Jimenez explains that premature campaigning can only be served against official poll candidates based on the law. With this, Jimenez says that publicly posted banners expressing encouragement for Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio to run in the 2022 polls is not an election offense. Kahit nakapag-file na ng COC ang tao, kung hindi pa naman nagsisimula ang campaign period, hindi pa siya tinuturing na official candidate. At dahil hindi pa siya official candidate, kahit anong gawin niya, hindi pa siya pwedeng tratuhin bilang kandidato. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa siya pwedeng mag-commit election offense. The campaign period for May 9, 2022 elections will start from February 8 to May 7, 2022. Earlier, Jimenez personally handed out registration forms to some households in Barangay Talipapa, Quezon City today. This, as some residents complain of no access to online downloading and printing of the forms that need to be filled out prior to going to their corresponding local COMELEC offices. Nakasagot din tayo ng mga katanungan tungkol sa registration kasi hindi lahat ng tao first time registrant. No? Marami sa kababayan natin nagsilipat o kaya matagal lang hindi bumuboto, hindi nila alam kung ano ang gagawin. So nandito tayo para mag-provide ng guidance. Nakatulong po talaga dito yun sa amin, lalong-lalong para yung mga kabataan dito na hindi pa nakapag-registered, so kailangan din po nila yun. Based on the latest record of COMELEC, 1.9 million individuals have already registered for the elections. However, the said figure is still far from their target number of 4 million voter registrants. The commission aims to encourage new eligible registrants and those who need to update their voter registration to go to COMELEC office and register. Registrants may go to the COMELEC office from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesdays to Saturdays, including holidays. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News & Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Public Works and Highways, or DPWH, revealed that two target locations for the bus ramp project in EDSA may face a big challenge. Janice Ingente will tell us why. The Department of Public Works and Highways is now preparing for the design of the elevated bus ramps to be constructed along EDSA. According to DPWH Regional Director Eric Ayapana, three locations were proposed by the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA. These are between Munoz and Quezon City Academy, Quezon City and Caloocan City, Congressional Avenue and Dario Bridge. Engineer Ayapana admits that two of the three proposed locations may face challenge on the construction. Ang challenge dito kasi may existing tayo na MRT sa taas. Yun talaga. Kaya nga design natin para makita natin po ano yung magiging clearance doon. Kasi isa dito sa may uh, Congressional Avenue going to Dario Bridge, yun ang baka feasible yung isang area na yun. Engineer Ayapana said they are targeting to finish the design of the elevated busway this month and will have a meeting with the involved agencies. Under coordination pa po tayo sa NMDA, tatlo po yung candidate site nila pero uh, alinman sa site na yun, titignan po base po kasi sa clearances nga eh, sa existing na structure ko alin talaga doon ang feasible. Construction of the said project is expected to start in four months. The DPWH believes that the elevated bus ramps will ease the traffic congestions due to closed U-turns on EDSA. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
For those are watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte appeals to law enforcement agencies to coordinate with the local government on the conduct of anti-drug operations within the city. Joe Nano will tell us why. To protect the safety of the public and to avoid extreme inconvenience, Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte is appealing for proper coordination in the conduct of anti-illegal drug operations. This is to avoid the recurrence of the PNP Pidea misencounter near a mall along Commonwealth Avenue in Quezon City. Mayor Belmonte reiterates that authorities should have a protocol on the crowd control as their safety are in danger during this kind of operations. Nakita naman natin na ang dami-daming mga videos na kinuha sa mga phones na nakikita natin yung mga tao ay nandyan lang, malapit lang sila, walang nagmamanage ng crowd. At uh, kung nagkaroon ng konting pagkakamali, panic or anuman, uh, maapektuhan itong mga taong ito. The local chief executive is also concerned on the impact of the incident among business owners within the crime scene as people in Quezon City are worried over their safety in the area. Gumagawa pala ng mga operations na ganito ang ating mga authorities sa mga commercial establishments ng ating lungsod. At sa tingin ko hindi siya fair sa ating po mga negosyante. Kasi ngayon iisipin ng mga tao ay huwag tayong pumunta sa si Ever kasi baka may operations dyan. Ay baka madamay tayo kung nagkamali. It's not fair on our businessmen and I also would like them to resolve that issue as to how do they choose the places where they conduct their operations. The official is also complaining over the intense traffic brought by the misencounter as many motorists were stranded and some residents were not able to make it to their work among others. Mayor Belmonte is urging PIDEA and PNP to coordinate with the respective city mayors first prior to the conduct of these kind of anti-illegal drug operations so they will be able to explain to their constituents if something went wrong that may cause them extreme panic and inconvenience. Sana man lang... Kung may mangyayaring operations uh, dito sa aming lungsod, kahit pa paano mabulungan na lang ako bilang mayor ng lungsod, bilang kortesiya lang sa akin na may mga pangyayaring gaganapin dito sa ating lungsod. So at least if something goes awry, hindi naman po ako nabubulaga o bulag at hindi ko masagot yung mga tanong ng aking mga mamamayan at I find that very unfair. The LGU is appealing to the public to refrain from spreading misinformation and disinformation on the incident pending the results of the probe. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the National Bureau of Investigation, an impartial uh, investigation, an impartial investigation on the encounter between the PNP and the PDEA personnel on Wednesday evening. Dante Amento tells us why it's live. Uh, yes, Dante, good evening. William, the National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, appreciates President Rodrigo Duterte's full trust in them. The NBI is the government's lead investigation agency responsible for handling and solving major high-profile cases. The chief executive has decided that only the NBI should probe the alleged misencounter between the personnel of the Philippine National Police in Quezon City and operatives of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PIDEA, operatives on Wednesday near a mall in Commonwealth Avenue in Quezon City. The chief executive also directs the joint board of, of inquiry formed by the PNP and the PIDEA to discontinue their ongoing investigation on the incident that left four dead. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says this is to ensure impartiality on the shootout incident since both parties are men in uniform. Nagdesisyon po ang ating presidente na tanging NBI lang po ang mag-iimbestiga doon sa putukan na nangyari sa panig ng mga kapulisan at ng PIDEA dyan po sa Quezon City. Yung mga binuo po, mga joint panel para imbestiga niyan na binuo po ng PNP at ng PIDEA ay hindi na po magtutuloy sa kanilang imbestigasyon. Thus, NBI spokesperson Ferdinand Davin assures that the Bureau will remain fair and thorough in their probe. Lavin added they have or they have gathered some evidences from the crime scene 
they will be coordinating also with the PNP and the PDEA for more pieces of evidence. This morning, the NBI conducted a meeting to discuss the matter and said about eight agents from different divisions will lead the agency's probe. First of all, we would like to thank the uh, President for his complete trust uh, with the NBI. The NBI uh, will stand to the challenge, as we always do. Uh, we will make sure that uh, we will uh, conduct a uh, fair and uh, impartial investigation. William Lavin clarifies they have not yet received the formal order from Malacanang in connection with the President's mandate. Meanwhile, Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara has given the NBI 10 days to submit and report on their investigation on the incident. And that's the latest live. Back to you. Uh, thank you. Dante Amento reporting live. The Philippine National Police is set to roll out its body camera project next month. Rea Ilagan will tell us why. Members of the National Capital Region Police Office or NCRPO started its training on the use of body cameras. The Philippine National Police has acquired around 2,696 body-worn cameras and 648 of them will be allotted to the NCRPO. The waterproof cameras are equipped with SIM cards and can record a video from 8 to 10 hours. PNP Directorate for Logistics Police Major General Angelito Casimiro said the body cameras would help counter the doubts of the public regarding alleged irregularities during police operations. Yung pong presence ng body cameras, yung po yung magiging uh, katulong o katuwang po ng PNP in the operation po niya. Yung po yung magiging kasangga po namin. Kasi there are instances po, in, in my experience sa field, na legitimate naman po yung operation namin at meron kaming video at may picture po. Nung umalis na po kami, pinagtatapon po yung mga, mga gamit, sinira yung mga pintuan, and saka po nagtatawag ng media. Casimiro adds the footages can also help them in defending their operatives if the suspects have false accusations. So ito po yung mag malaking depensa po para sa regularity po ng police operation namin sa film po. The body cameras are set to be distributed to all police stations nationwide and can be used by police officers starting March or first week of April. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine Embassy in Washington has cautioned Filipinos in the United States of America or USA to stay safe and vigilant amid rising incidents of anti-Asian attacks in various parts of the U.S. The Embassy and the Department of Foreign Affairs or DFA also called on the local authorities in the U.S. to further ensure their protection of Asian Americans, including Filipinos. Among the reports concerning violence against those of Asian descent include the case of Filipino American Noel Quintana, who was slashed in the face by a fellow subway passenger early February this year. Filipinos in the U.S. have been advised to immediately call 911 if they experience an attack. Filipinos who wish to voice out their opinions on whether the Visiting Forces Agreement with the United States of America should be abolished or not can now send their messages through the government's hotline. Rosalie Cons explains why. President Rodrigo Duterte is considering everything before making his final decision on the Visiting Forces Agreement or VFA of the Philippines with the United States of America, whether he will continue or abrogate it. According to Malacanang, the public may send their position about the issue via phone call or email. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the chief executive recognizes the benefits of the agreement, but the Philippines may also be in great danger if American military troops and equipment remain in our territory in case a huge conflict erupts. Kung nais niyong marinig o kung nais niyong marinig ang inyong boses tungkol dito, wag po kayo magatubili. Kayo po ay magpadala ng email o mensahe o kung anuman doon sa mga linya 
ng ating mga ahensa sa gobyerno para makarating po kay Presidente. The President said he is still undecided on the VFA and wants to hear the feedback of the public first. Aside from the public's opinion, the Chief Executive is also considering the reaction of the military according to Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Luxin. AFP Chief of Staff Lt. Gen. Cerilito Sobejana said he supports the decision of the President and the Philippines should not be so dependent on other countries. He added we must be able to stand on our own. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, some senators have weighed in on the uh, President Duterte's pronouncement that he wants to hear the people first before deciding on the fate of the Visiting Forces Agreement. This report will tell us why. The final fate of the Visiting Forces Agreement still hangs in the balance, as President Duterte has yet to decide whether or not the agreement should continue. According to the President, he wants to hear the public sentiment first. Senator Panfilo Lapson, who was criticized by the President following his extortion remark on the President's threat to the United States to pay for the VFA, seems to be delighted by the development. According to the Senator, nobody has the monopoly of wisdom regardless of power and authority. Lapson says the best decisions are made out of humility of listening to others and not out of hubris. He adds there is nothing to lose in listening to the people and the president will have the final say anyway. Meanwhile, Senator Coco Pimentel, who chairs the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, lauded the president's move. Pimentel called it a good idea, suggesting that they can formalize it into a referendum. However, for Senator Francis Pangilinan, the VFA that Malacanang should be prioritized at this time is vaccine for all and not the visiting forces agreement. The palace has yet to comment on the senator's remarks. Pauline Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. President Rodrigo Duterte signs into law COVID-19 Vaccination Program Act of 2021. The law aims to expedite the vaccine procurement and administration process of COVID-19 vaccines to Filipinos. This also establishes a national indemnity fund amounting to 500 million pesos. Under the measure, local government units will be exempted from certain procurement rules under existing laws and will allow them to make an advance payment of not more than 50% of the contract price. The law also paves the way for the national government, LGUs, and the private sector to be authorized to procure COVID-19 vaccines through the National Task Force Against COVID-19 and the Department of Health. Meanwhile, the Interagency Task Force approved this morning the recommendation of the National Immunization Technical Advisory Group that Sinovac COVID-19 vaccines are safe for Filipino healthcare workers. Filipino experts say the Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine is safe. Aiko Miguel explains why. Although a study in Brazil shows that Sinovac Biotech's COVID-19 vaccine has a 50.4 efficacy on people often exposed to COVID cases, another study by experts reveals that the same vaccine can give enough protection against SARS-CoV-2 or the virus that causes COVID-19. DOH spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosari Vergere clarifies that the statement of the country's Food and Drug Administration is not a contraindication, but the agency was just flagging the government to warn that Sinovac's vaccine provides low protection against mild coronavirus infection. Ultimately, the AUA of FDA establishes the safety and efficacy of Sinovac, and our experts have ruled that Sinovac's 100% efficacy rate in preventing moderate and severe cases is indeed sufficient to meet the goal of reducing deaths, protections which we want to afford first and foremost to our healthcare workers. Sinovac can give 70% protection against moderate infection and 100% protection against severe COVID-19 infection. Dr. Marisa Alejandria, member of the DOH Technical Advisory Group or DOH TAG, emphasized that Sinovac's COVID-19 vaccine is safe. In our deliberations, what we looked at is to ensure that safety, the vaccine is safe, and that has been borne out by the review of the trials. 
Even Dr. Edsel Salvana, member of the DOH tag, is ready to be inoculated with the vaccine produced by the Chinese firm. As for myself, as a healthcare worker who sees COVID patients, I am willing to take this vaccine. Experts, however, acknowledge the role of FDA on the evaluation of COVID-19 vaccines. They also encourage medical frontliners to get inoculated because their willingness to do so would boost the public's confidence in the vaccines. So if our healthcare workers are reluctant to accept vaccination, then that also sends a uh, signal to the general public. So we'd like to offer this opportunity for healthcare workers, if they're willing to do so, to have themselves vaccinated with Sinovac. The DOH, its technical advisory group, and NITAG reiterate that President Rodrigo Duterte has the final say on the approval of the experts' recommendation. Experts also clarify that Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine inoculation among healthcare workers is not mandatory. We want to preserve the line of priority for our healthcare workers because they deserve it. If they want to give up their slot for this particular Sinovac vaccine and wait for the next vaccine to arrive in the country, that is their personal decision and it is not mandatory for them to accept this particular Sinovac vaccine. The health department will finalize its list of priorities to receive the 600,000 doses of Sinovac COVID-19 vaccines expected to arrive on Sunday. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. South Korea speedily starts up its mass immunization programs to rise back from the damages brought by COVID-19. Polga Chalyan will tell the details live. Yes, Paul, good evening. Marielle, South Korea disseminated its first batch of coronavirus vaccines to launch mass vaccination programs as soon as possible. According to the officials of Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, around 5,260 residents and workers under the age of 65 in more than 200 nursing homes, rehab centers, and mental institutions will receive the first shot of the two-dose AstraZeneca vaccine on Friday. The vaccines arrive at a critical time for the nation as the virus has increasingly impacted the country's economic standing with service sector jobs taking the biggest blows. Not only that, the death toll brought by the virus has now reached more than 1,500 deaths. Authorities have the confidence that the country will not end up as dire as the previous outcomes in America or Europe as long as restrictions and preventive measures are observed with hope that social and economic activity will gradually go back to normal. Marielle? All right, Paul, thank you for that report. Hyundai will recall thousands of its electric cars, making it as one of the most expensive car recalls in history. This report explains why. About 82,000 Hyundai electric cars around the globe will be recalled for battery replacement after 15 incident reports of fires. It covers the Ionic EV and Elect City vehicles in South Korea, which include 27,000 Korean vehicles and 55,000 elsewhere in the world. The said recall will cost 1 trillion Korean won or $900 million where the average cost per vehicle is 11,000. Precise figures are not available because most automakers do not disclose the cost of their recalls. Since there are still more gasoline-powered cars on the road than electric vehicles, the estimated total cost of Hyundai's e-vehicle recall can easily exceed the $900 million estimation because the costs are cheaper at greater production. According to Hyundai, it is still in talks with its battery supplier LG Energy Solutions to determine which company will be responsible for the cost. The Korean Transport Ministry, however, seemed to put the responsibility on LG for the fire problems in its statement on the recall, attributing them to a misaligned battery cell. Meanwhile, LG denied that was the reason for the fires and said it will cooperate with the Korean Transport Ministry's ongoing investigation. Maria Latoza, UNTV News & Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
Meanwhile, Facebook has completely banned the Myanmar military and military-controlled pages from its site and from Instagram, which it also owns. Ia De Vera will tell us why live. Yes, Ia, please go ahead. Ariel citing the violence produced by the February 1 coup as one of the reasons social media giant Facebook decided to ban Myanmar's military accounts and social media activities. Myanmar's military known as Tat Madaw are now barred to use Facebook and Instagram, which includes military-owned businesses from any advertisements. On Facebook's blog post, the company said Tat Madaw's history of exceptionally severe human rights abuses, its on-platform content and behavior violations, and the likelihood that online threats could lead to offline harm. The company believes that there are high risks on allowing Tat Madaw to do any social media activities. Meanwhile, as Facebook took down all links linked to Linked to Tat Madaw, the pro-military demonstrators in Myanmar marched down to Yangon and clashed with pro-democracy and residents in the area after the anti-coup demonstrators expressed their disapproval of the rally by banging pots and pans. Security forces arrived on the area as the conflict intensified and took the alleged pro-military attackers. Marielle? All right, Ia, thank you for that report. Experts have made an extraordinary discovery of a tree with its branches and roots still intact after being petrified 20 million years ago in Greece. Marvi Delfin will give us the details live. Yes, Marvi, good evening. Muriel, the fascinating find of the 19.6-meter tree during an excavation along the Kalyuni Sigir Highway is considered by geologists as a rare one, as this is the first time in 25 years that such a discovery is being made. Stretching across almost all of the Greek island's western peninsula, Lesbos Petrified Forest is a UNESCO Global Geopark spanning 15,000 hectares and is renowned for its vivid and colorful fossilized tree trunks. It was formed 20 million years ago when a volcano exploded in the northern part of the island, burying the, set the entire area under ash and lava. Since 2013, geologists has yielded more than 15 significant fossil sites and numerous vegetation were found, such as conifers, fruit-producing trees, sequoia trees, pine, palm, cinnamon, and oak trees. These well-preserved specimens of flora will help develop experts' understanding of the region's ancient subtropical biodiversity and the impact of climate change. Marielle? All right, Marvi, thank you for that live report. So all Twitter content creators out there, your next hashtag might earn you money soon. Here's why from Early Beyonis. Twitter is currently exploring options on how they could add a new feature called Super Follow to allow people to charge or solicit money for exclusive content. The new feature would enable subscribers to access exclusive content, newsletters, and groups, and even have support badges in their profile. Aside from the super follow feature, Twitter also announced a new feature called Communities, which appeared to be its take on something like Facebook groups. Super follow is not available yet, but Twitter says it will have more to share in the coming months. These new features are expected to compete with other creator monetization platforms such as YouTube and Facebook. A strong motivation for this new feature could be the company's ambitious revenue target from $3.7 billion last 2020 to $7.5 billion by 2023. Early Briones, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Latoza, live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. And those are the reasons behind the news, February 26, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro the third. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. <laughs>